Hi, everybody. I'm Harold Rivera, and this is my friend Bernard Caravella. And aside from the fact that we're both Latins from Manhattan with mustaches, Bernard and I share something else that's in common. Half a lifetime ago, back in January 1972, our paths crossed inside a horrible institution for the mentally retarded called the Willowbrook State School on Staten Island, at the time the largest institution for the retarded in the world. And despite the fact that it was in New York City, it was also one of the worst. Bernard had just turned 21 years old. He had just, when I met him, forced authorities in the institution to sign him out of that wretched place in which he had spent the last 18 years of his life inside Willowbrook since the age of three. He had wasted those years inside that awful place. It was the tragic result of Bernard's being incorrectly diagnosed as mentally retarded, though his actual condition is cerebral palsy. There is nothing wrong with Bernard's brain. But in those dark days, folks, as you probably know far better than I do, the institution, all institutions of its type, were giant catch-alls, kind of warehouses for children with all different kinds of ailments or conditions. If a kid wasn't perfect, places like Willowbrook existed, where they could be sent out of sight, maybe out of mind, certainly out of the house, out of the neighborhood, and out from under the feet of those parents and families. Over the long years since the first Willowbrook exposés, I have learned not to blame parents for what was happening to their children back then. The institution was just what society in those days felt the best alternative for uh, people with developmental disabilities, kind of a theoretically benign warehouse where their care could be mass produced and they could live out their almost certainly shortened lives. That system went along benefiting from a conspiracy, I think, of silence, a conspiracy of silence among the states, the families, the staffs of the various institutions, and the media for decades. Then in the 1960s, Senator Robert F. Kennedy, whose own sister Rosemary, as you recall, uh, was retarded, visited Willowbrook as the senator from the great state of New York. Senator Kennedy was appalled by the horrifying conditions he saw. He called it at the time a snake pit. But still, the boys, the girls, the men and women inside, the inmates of Willowbrook, languished in conditions that were more reminiscent of a concentration camp or a kennel than a hospital. Before I go any further, for the benefit of the younger members of our audience, I'd like you to see what they saw back in 1972, that what they saw that, was forced, that forced them really to deal with the situation that we're looking at. Let's flash back 33 years. I visited the state institutions for the mentally retarded, and I think that particularly at Willowbrook that we have a situation that borders on uh, a snake pit and that the children live in filth. I first heard of this big place with the pretty sounding name because of a call I received from a member of the Willowbrook staff, a Dr. Michael Wilkins. The doctor told me he'd just been fired because he'd been urging parents with children in one of the buildings, building number six, to organize so they could more effectively demand improved conditions for their children. The doctor invited me to see the conditions he was talking about, so unannounced and unexpected by the school administration, we toured building number six. The doctor had warned me that it would be bad. It was horrible. This is what it looked like. This is what it sounded like. But how can I tell you about the way it smelled? It smelled of filth, it smelled of disease, and it smelled of death. How long have you been at Willowbrook? 18 years. How long were you given physical therapy in school? Five years. Are you still going to school? No. Why? I'm over, over age. You're too old? Yes. Would you like to go back to school? Yes, I do. What would you want to learn if you went back to school? Learn up my reading more. Learn how to read? Yes. How, how is, how is it living on the ward that you live? Disgrace. Is it disgrace? Yes. Why? The, con the conditions are getting worse every time they cut the budget more and more. The Willowbrook story and the years of television follow-ups ultimately had a profound impact on the way society cares for the developmentally disabled, as you know. Not just because the old way was horrible, but also because humane, progressive alternatives existed. For example, in the form of community care, one-to-one -one housing, and other non-institutional models. 
And in selecting which was most appropriate, the most articulate advocates turned out to be the consumers themselves. That's what Bernard, in fact, does right now for a living. He works for the state of New York, keeping those politicians honest. So, buddy, first of all, how are you doing? Okay. Great. Well, who are the best advocates for the <clears throat> developmentally disabled? The parents and the consumers themselves. Parents and consumers themselves. Why is that? Because they know what they want. And they know what, what they need from themselves. And now they know how to make choices. How to make choices. And the choices available far more humane, progressive than they were in your day. Oh, yes. And they get more and more progressive. So life's good? Yes. All right. Great. Right. Thank you. So just as Willowbrook took more than government action alone to fix, full inclusion of people with disabilities within society must come as a result of the continued action of brave individuals like Bernard, people who don't let their disabilities stand in their way. What's also profoundly necessary is that they get the protection and advocacy efforts of agencies and organizations like your superb National Disability Rights Network. We salute you for the work you do. You are the future. And we're glad to be part of your evening tonight. For Bernard and me, thanks very much for listening.